In this video, we're going to take a look at having some practice with adding and subtracting fractions that don't have common denominators. So copy these three questions down, and then pause the video, work out the answers to each question, and once you've finished all three, then resume the video and you can see the uh, solutions with the explanations um, for each of them. So if we take a look at question number one, we see we have five eighths and three sixteenths. So we do not have a common denominator. We need to get a common denominator. So we look to the larger number, and we decide that our common denominator is going to be 16. Now we look at the other denominator that we have, and in this case, it's a denominator of 8. And so we have to ask the question, 8 times what number will give us 16? And once we do that, we see that 8 times 2 will give us 16. So our magic number is 2, and whatever goes in the denominator goes in the numerator as well. And now we multiply our numerators, and 2 times 5, 2 times 5 gives us 10, and 2 times 8 gives us 16. And now we have 10 sixteenths plus 3 sixteenths, and so this will give us 10 plus 3 all over 16, or 13 sixteenths. So the answer to this first practice problem is 13 sixteenths. Again, 16 was the larger of the two denominators, so that's what we make our common denominator. And our magic number for this example was 2. If we take a look at the second problem, we now have 7 eighths minus 1 quarter. Again, we will make our common denominator 8. And then we look to our other denominator, and we have to answer the question, 4 times what number will give us 8? And so we can see that 4 times 2 will give us 8 and therefore 2 is our magic number for this problem. And so it goes in the numerator and the denominator. And now we multiply, we multiply across the numerator and across the denominator. So we have 7 eighths minus, and then 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. We double check that our, common, that our denominators are common which they are, and now we can combine our numerators and we get 7 minus 2 all over 8, or 7 minus 2 is 5 eighths. So the answer to the second problem is 5 eighths. And if we look at the third problem, now we have three fractions, we look to the largest denominator, and the largest denominator is 8, so that's what we will make our common denominator. And if we look at the first fraction of 3 fourths, it has a denominator, it has a denominator of 4, and so now 4 times what number will give us 8, and that number is 2, and so our magic number is 2, and so we get 2 over 2. And you know what? I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. And so now we look to our next denominator, and again, we know that we want our common denominator to be 8. And so from this fraction, then, of 1 half, we know that we need 2 times some number to give us 8, because 2 is that denominator. And so we determine that it is 4. And so 
we put 4 in the numerator and 4 in the denominator. And then in each one, and I'll do this in one step, we multiply across the numerator and across the denominator in each case. So doing the first fraction, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 4 is 8, plus 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8, minus, and we didn't have to touch this one because it already had a common denominator of 8, so we get 6 eighths plus 4 eighths minus 3 eighths, which is 6 plus 4 minus 3, combining our numerators, including the signs, all divided by 8, and this gives us 6 and 4 is 10, 10 minus 3 is 7 eighths. So our magic number was 2, and we multiplied by 2 over 2. Here our magic number was 4, so we had 4 over 4, and we had 2 over 2 in this one, and 2 over 2 in this one as well. And you can see that 2 is a common one, and the numbers are not going to be very big. Uh, they're going to be usually uh, 2 or 3. Um, once in a while, uh, once in a while, you know, four or five, but generally speaking, the numbers will be fairly low. But that gives you a look at the solutions to the practice problems on adding fractions that do not have a common denominator.